Hi guys. It is just a gray, blah, chilly. Just your basic, just your your basic fucking yuck, depressing day here in the end times and what's left of the paradise of Garfield, Texas. Garfield, Texas. On this gloomy Thursday morning, March 28th, and uh, you know, I've been busting my fucking ass out of here in this yard all week so I can look over at this goddamn third world hellhole next door. These fucking pigs. You know, I need to build a goddamn wall. I need to build a fucking fence, I guess. <sighs> Jesus. Anyway, so uh, it is a Thursday morning. We all know what that means. It's just time for your your old depressed collapsitarian to sit here and whine about how miserable his whole fucking life is is, is turning into. That just just one fucking thing, one thing. Uh, so by the way, as you notice. Uh, I, I am not pausing for the pleasant task of thanking the latest one of my kind-hearted tribes members who have ever found it in their hearts and wallets to pony up a fucking dollar bill to uh, toss me for the what I do for the work that I do for you guys uh, here in my life, bringing you the news of how we are so fucked. So anyway, I don't know. I'm just gonna sit here. I haven't even turned on the goddamn computer uh, this morning. So I don't know. Maybe the whole fucking planet has burned down since I turned it off at about 1.30 in the morning last night, man. I don't know. There's so many. There's so many places. Let's just. I'm just going to tell you about my. Uh, going to start out, and we'll see where it goes. So I'm just going to sit here, having my cup of Save the Planet organic coffee, come that I enjoy every morning out of this uh, one dollar made in China painted coffee mug. I know. Uh, I wonder how many carcinogens are in this uh, that that I pour boiling water into to start my morning every morning. And that's another thing that uh, you know I, I I try somewhat not to bitch about my personal health, but what's been going on uh, the past week or so is that when I when I get up in the morning when I when I first get up I mean this vertigo have you ever had this shit I've never had vertigo in my entire life uh, I've heard it described to me but it's some it's some weird shit so I I get up in the morning I, I mean I'm just talking about sitting up in bed and it's and like whoa <coughs> it's like you're on a rocking um, ship and uh, I mean, I literally feel like that I'm that I'm gonna pass out. I mean, it's uh, the the just my vision blurs, and it kind of feels like I'm going over to uh, to the right that I'm gonna fall over. I'm, I mean, it, it's it, it's beyond lightheaded. I mean, if you've never had this shit. And it's every morning now that I, when I'm getting up, so there's something going on, some fucking health issue, some little whisper from the universe. I think the whisper from the universe is don't get out of fucking bed. Stay in goddamn bed. And uh, so I stagger out of bed and I, <clears throat> and, and I stand up and I literally have to grab hold of the, you know, the chair. And, uh, and you know, and take about three breaths so I can stumble into the kitchen. And so then I come out here and 
drink a cup of coffee. And so far, by the time I uh, finish my cup of coffee, it seems to have mostly gone away. But I also notice in the shower, that's a great place to have vertigo, <coughs> that uh, when I'm in the shower, I, I can feel it coming on. Anyway, I, 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 am, I have no idea what, what this is about. Of course, I have still <coughs> not been to the dentist. To this minute, have not been to the dentist with all of this shit. Uh, and th th this other health problem, which is uh, e even TMI for ham bone, that, that I'm not going to get into. So, uh, <coughs> unless you really don't need to hear about that problem uh, that needs some medical attention. Uh, so, you know, so here I'm just falling apart. But, uh, oh, well, anyway, how did I get off on all of this shit? Uh, I've gone through, uh, cheap skates and my old man body falling apart. What was, oh yeah, the, the car, the gas sucking truck. So, uh, <clears throat> I first mentioned this gas, uh, my, my hunt for a new gas sucking truck about, uh, when was it, about five or six months ago, I actually had uh, an angel appear, an anonymous angel appear, <clears throat> to make me an offer, because you know I'm selling this place, assuming <clears throat> this my uninsured <coughs> house doesn't burn down or float away in the hurricane this summer. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to be selling this place. Your old climate refugee is going to be selling this place, you know, to move to New York. Anyway, I think you guys know I'm going to be selling this place. And so I'll probably, it's going to be about June 1st of 2020, assuming I and the planet and the, and the global industrial economy, you know, Anytime you, you're, you're now looking ahead like a year, you, it's just assumed, you know, assuming the economy is still alive, uh, you're still alive, and the planet's still alive. So, <clears throat> obviously. So, assuming uh, all of that is, is, is still, uh, the thin chance that that's still alive, I'm going to come in for the last time in my life into, you know, some money. Probably, I'm hoping, depending on uh, how quickly the Internal Revenue Service catches me, I figure I'm going to walk out of here with about $150,000 in my pocket. Now, of course, <clears throat> I have to immediately put that money back into real estate to keep it away uh, from, from the goddamn IRS. So it's not like any, anyone thinking, well, hell, Hambone's got $150,000 in the bank. Uh, fuck sending him a dollar bill uh, to support what he does uh, with his life. But no, I just have to turn it right back into real estate. And of course, when, when, I, when I sell this place, I don't have any more rental income. But we'll, we'll get back to my, my, the, the state of my income because I know how much you want to hear about the search for my truck. So anyway, uh, what I have worked out with this anonymous angel is that they are going to front me $10,000 to buy a decent truck. And so I'm going to get $10,000 from this angel and buy my new truck. So I have $10,000 to spend. I've never spent $10,000 on a truck in my life. I spent 30, I paid $3,500 for the truck I had. I said $10,000, uh, you know, I should be able to buy a damn nice truck for, for 10 grand. And then after I bought the new truck, I was going to sell my truck. So let's say I'm hoping to get the same dollar that I paid for it. So let's say I sell my truck for 3500 So 
then I'm going to send that money. So then I'll owe the person, let's say, $6,500. I mean, it, it depends on how much I sell my truck for. So if I sell it for $3,500, then I owe the guy $6,500, which I will pay back when I sell my house. When, uh, you know, th this is already a very dangerous, dangerous game to play in the real estate investment biz when you start spending the money on a real estate sale more than a year before you see the money. People do this all the fucking time and, and, and regret it. So they're already skating on thin ice. So that's the deal. Uh, so I've got $10,000 to, to look for a truck. And so what I'm looking for is a six-cylinder Toyota Tacoma. I need to bump up to six cylinders because I want to get a little camper. And a four-cylinder just won't do it. So I need, I need a six-cylinder uh, truck. And I've given up on finding the manual transmission. I really wanted a stick. But good God, there's like two of them in the whole, in the whole fucking country. They just didn't make any. Uh, it needs to have... This is a new one. Uh, it needs to have a six-foot bed. I thought every Toyota truck out there uh, had a six-foot bed so I can stretch out in it and sleep in it. And, and, and I want to cut it off at 100,000 miles. So I want to get a Toyota truck with less than 100,000 miles on it, and hopefully it'll be the last truck I ever have to buy. It should take me into the collapse of global industrial civilization, or I should be dead before the truck is, is my hope, that, I, that the truck will outlive me, and this will be the last fucking gas-sucking truck I ever need to buy in my fucking life. And uh, so I got $10,000 to spend. Well, guys, go out there. Get uh, plug, plug in these parameters, right? Plug in these parameters. So uh, the, the the truck that I want uh, does not exist for ten thousand. It doesn't exist for anywhere close to ten thousand uh, dollars. So <clears throat> I I've, there's nothing in Austin. So yesterday I find two down in Houston, in Houston, uh, one from a dealer, one from a private person on Craigslist. And they're both the same, they're both $13,500, which is, wow, $10,000 plus $3,500. So they're both $13,500. And I said, well, okay, that's close enough to ten. So uh, I get in my gas sucking truck. It's a beautiful day. I want to go look at the, want to go look at the wild flowers anyway. So Sancho and I, we head down to Houston on this beautiful spring day, and, we, and we're going to look at the one at the dealer first. And I get there, and it's a gorgeous truck, bright red. I mean, it's got Hambone's name all over it. Sixty nine thousand. Of course, it was on a goddamn rebuilt salvage title. Uh, which the fucker was not up front about. Uh, so the truck had already, I mean, he showed me the pictures of what it looked like when he got it. But, you know, it looked like mostly cosmetic. And I said, okay, I'll take a chance on it. Beautiful truck. And I'm walking around the truck and just like, like, what is going on with this truck? Well, what was going on with the truck is that the bed, I guess the standard bed of a Toyota truck, is now like fucking four feet. It's this stubby ass little bed. I mean, Sancho Panza could hardly stretch out in the thing. And, and I'm going, and I'm looking at the guy like, like, what the hell happened to the bed of the truck? And you go, what do you mean? He, he goes, this is a standard Toyota truck bed, and I'm pointing to my truck, which is a six-foot bed. I said, no, that's the standard. And, and, and he goes, no, that's called a long bed. I said, are you fucking serious that a 72-inch that a bed is now, so if I want to be able to sleep in the back of my own fucking pickup truck, I got now I have to add long bed to my list of things? And he said, I guess so. Well, it so happened that the next truck I was going to look at was a long bed. The, uh, the guy had advertised it as a 
six-cylinder Tacoma long bed. And so I'm thinking, wow, that's pretty cool. That I, I, I said, I'm wondering what long bed means. If a standard bed is 72, I was thinking, is it 78 inches? Is it 80 inches? Is it 84 inches? I was thinking of how cool it was going to be find a long bed. No, a, a long bed Toyota now is 72 inches. So, but anyway, he had a long bed. Uh, and, he, and he told me, he described himself on Craigslist as South Houston. South Houston. So I get on as some uh, little suburb, I can't remember the name. South Houston is, is how he referred to the suburb. I get, in the, I get in my fucking truck, guys, and I start driving and driving and driving. I leave Harris County. I hit Brazoria County. I drive all the fucking way across Brazoria County. I, I, I drive into Galveston County. I'm coming into fucking Galveston, Texas. I have driven from Austin to, to Galveston. My God. I mean, Austin to Galveston, it's, it's a long fucking way to go look at a truck. So you probably know where this story is going. <clears throat> I finally get to the guy's house, and there's the truck sitting, at, you know, sitting in his driveway. This nice-looking six-cylinder uh, long bed pickup truck uh, with 86,000 miles on it. He, too, wanted 13.5 for it. <clears throat> So I get out of my truck, walk up to his, and the guy comes out of the house, and we introduce ourselves to each other, and he goes, and he goes, well, Sam, he goes, what are you doing here? And I said, what am I doing here? Uh, I'm, uh, you know, we, we talked at 1 o'clock yesterday afternoon. 1 o'clock yesterday afternoon. Okay, he, he's giving me his address. Uh, I, I said, I'm here to buy a truck. And he goes, and, and, and he goes, dude, I'm sorry. He goes, I emailed you at 3 o'clock that this truck is sold. And I said, what are you talking about? I, 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 said, I, I said, since you talked to me at 1 o'clock and told me to fucking drive from Austin to Galveston, you have sold this truck. And he goes, I'm sorry, ma'am, but that's, uh, uh, you know, I, he goes, I'd been working with this guy, and I told him that I have some man uh, driving here from, uh, from Austin, uh, and he says he's got cash, and uh, the guy was over here in 15 minutes with $13,500 in cash. There you go. That was my that was my uh, my my hunt for my truck yesterday, and I mean I I use more than an entire tank of gas. It was about forty fucking dollars of gas. It was I left here at one thirty uh, in the in the afternoon yesterday and got back at almost eleven thirty. It was almost ten hours out of my life. Over forty fucking dollars. I spent in my gas sucking truck to uh, to go look but, but at, at a stubby ass bed that I can't stretch out in in a fucking truck that that was already sold. I, anyone who's ever done this Craigslist thing knows exactly what it feels like to be burned. But I have never driven from Austin to fucking Galveston to be burned like that. Uh, so anyway. The, the, in the middle of all this, uh, as I am looking for a new truck, I, some horrendous, I was literally in the Toyota dealership parking lot looking at their use, uh, looking at driving past their use, and boom, and uh, something happened in in my front end you might you might remember that i just left my goddamn truck at my mechanics for six days for six days uh telling him uh that, that there's something serious forming in my front end 
and just go through the front end of this truck and fix whatever you can. And, uh, and, and I told them when I left that goddamn truck off for six days, you know, while I was at South by Southwest, that I think there's probably more than one thing. I said, even if you find one thing, that there's probably more than one issue going on. I said, so don't think you found the, you know what I'm saying. So after six days, he tells me, well, he tells me, my, they, they always tell you this, that your shocks, your, your shocks need replacing. That's the standard line. Uh, your shocks need replacing, and we changed out the brake calipers. I'm not 100% sure what a brake caliper is, and a new tire. That will be... What was it? Three, a little over three hundred and fifty dollars, or ten percent of the uh, uh, of the price that I paid for that truck. I got it out of the shop. When was that? Uh, nine days ago. I got it out of the shop, and I do admit that the squeak was gone out of the brake, but I knew that he hadn't fixed the goddamn problem. And so now you should hear, I, I mean this, this, uh, I, I have no idea, guys, if, if the goddamn steering wheel is going to fucking lock up at me at 70 miles an hour or what. So now I have to take the fucking car back to the mechanic. And every time I take the goddamn car, uh, he says to leave it here for a week. I'm living out in fucking Garfield, Texas. I'm not on a bus line. The motherfucker won't even answer his phone. I, I have to drive all the way to Austin, Texas, uh, on, on this rattle trap, you know, this this, this fucking uh, death trap, and and he's gonna tell me, well, well, Hambone, uh, what do you think that that you're just gonna drop the car off? And, and I'm gonna say, y you motherfucker, you had this car for six days, and uh, so here I am. Uh, I'm getting ready to get in my gas sucking truck uh, and, uh, and, and drive to Austin and probably have to leave it there for another five or six days. And, and, and there is no telling what uh, I'm getting ready to fucking spend on this truck. $300, $500, and I'm no fucking closer. It, it, in some ways, I'm farther away today than I was yesterday for, from, from finding this new truck. There, there's, there's, I, I've got to get rid of this old truck. It's got over $250,000. It's been a great truck, $3,500. Uh, it has been a great truck. I'm not whining about my truck. I'm whining about my situation. This has been a great truck. I think it's got like... 260,000 miles. I'm on the original engine, the original clutch, the original timing chain, the original alternator, the original radiator, the original fuel pump, the original water pump. My God, uh, it's going to be from here on out, it's going to be every fucking week there's going to be a new $500 problem. I've got to get rid of the truck. I sure as hell can't drive this truck for another trip to New York. And, and I'm leaving on May 13th. I got a big hunk of April taken out of my, my life for the old Settlers Music Festival, and I'm supposed to be out of here uh, in, in, in six weeks. I'm fucked. I, 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 I'm completely fucked. I've got to, I have got to find uh, this truck, and obviously, obviously, I'm not going to find this truck for uh, for for any ten thousand dollars, minimally, it's going to take up my full ten thousand dollars and whatever I sell this truck for. So both these trucks I looked at yesterday were thirteen thousand five hundred dollars. That's pretty much the universe telling me, and, and these are bottom of the barrel. Uh, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna be paying the full ten thousand dollars. Uh, and uh, what I get for my truck. And so then, of course, instead of owing my angel $6,500 in a year, you know, $10,000 is going to go right off the top 
of, of what I sell this place for, which is that much less that I have to spend uh, on, on my on, on the place in New York. I'm going to buy ten fucking thousand dollars. The the day I I I sell this house, I, I will have already spent. Don't even get me going and how much goddamn money I'm going to have to spend to get this to get this uh, dump ready to sell, like a fucking privacy fence. There, 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 there's like a couple of thousand fucking dollars I, I'm, I'm going to have to spend uh, in the next year uh, on, a, on a goddamn privacy fence. I'm, where, where the fuck am I going to get this money? Which, of course, is, 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 is the next thing, guys. Uh, you know, it, it, it's getting goddamn close to where I am just going to... I, I, I'm going to have to... And it, it, just wrenching these words out of my mouth. It, you know, it, it, I, I'm going to have to get back on some level back in the Matrix and get a fucking job. Uh, this this gas-sucking truck... I think it's pretty safe to say uh, that the, the, in the year 2019, so far in the year 2019, that this gas sucking truck, uh, certainly when I add in this next bill over this steering problem, uh, I, have one, I, I can virtually guarantee that this, that this truck alone, with, with no other expenses, that I have spent 100 percent of my income income uh, where's the bullshit detector button uh, on this truck 100 percent of my total income I, I am pretty sure uh, will, will have gone into this truck now over 100 percent of my income from my rental income and so for, for those of you uh, who really give a shit how much money does Hambo make? I make, I have a roommate who pays me $650 a month uh, to share this house with. Of that $650, $200 goes out to, uh, $200 goes out to taxes. So I make, as a landlord, as a real estate investor, I make four hundred and fifty dollars a month. Four hundred and fifty times twelve. That's forty-five hundred. But five thousand four hundred dollars a year. Fifty-four hundred dollars a year is my total income that that I make. Not and then and my God, when I and then when then when I take out of that, you know what I spend on this goddamn place. Uh, I've spent the, between this lawnmower. I, I have spent another two to three hundred dollars uh, just getting getting this place fixed up. Uh, you know, but and so I make four hundred and fifty dollars a month, and pretty much everything else that that I make, I'm, I I am completely dependent on uh, my. Uh, tribes members finding it in their hearts and their wallets to throw me a couple of dollars and uh, and so what I decided if you remember back in January I did my last when was it the middle of January I did my last one, one, one of these screaming fits about uh, about all the cheapskates uh, all the cheapskate parasites you know just how many times do I say that 99 percent 99 percent of the people uh, who subscribe to me and, and uh, collapse chronicles have never thrown in one fucking dollar but anyway uh, I decided that I wasn't gonna have any more of those rants I had that rant, and I think that rant might have gotten me about $100, and I haven't had that rant since, and so take a wild guess. I have made less money uh, in March of 2019 every, every single month 
the more and more I'm up close when you add up Humpty Dumpty Tribe and Collapse Chronicles. I know there's a lot of overlap, but you add that I'm, I'm getting close to 10,000 subscribers now. Uh, but I, I, I'm getting more and more subscribers. I'm getting more and more views, particularly over there on Collapse Chronicles. The more subscribers I get, the more views I get, um, the less and less money I get. Uh, it's the, these these lines are supposed to go like this together, but no, the the it's it's like the more that I do, the harder, the more hours I put in my life into in, in doing this, uh, the less and less money I get. It's so I, I I think it is safe to say, particularly when you. Uh, when you add in this new thing with the steering, that 100% of my income is going into that gas-sucking truck. And, and, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm completely fucked. Yes, I will have a pile of money coming in uh, in about a year and two or three months, but again, it's, it, it's not even going to stop. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to put it in an escrow account. Uh, put it somewhere where the fucking IRS can't get their get their paws on it, and, and I've got to run out there and buy some more real estate and immediately, you know, rent the place out for more rental income, because I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to run this guy out of here uh, when I'm when I am uh, putting the place up for sale. So I'm not even gonna have that. So if it takes three months. You know, there's two thousand dollars that I've already lost in, in in rental income while I'm selling this place, and you know, by the time I get a new place, it's it's going to be probably five or six thousand dollars in lost rental income to go from one rental uh, to the next. And uh, so I've got to get some goddamn money since uh, obviously this is, and, 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 and once again, I, I need to have this, uh, make, make this disclaimer. If, if there is anybody out there on this planet suffering some fucking delusion that, uh, that Hambone Little Tail does what he does on YouTube for the money, uh, you, you are you are beyond a climate change denier. You are beyond a chemtrail wacko. You are so fucking clueless that you are uh, just irredeemably clueless. Uh, the, the the money has nothing to do with what I do on YouTube. I assure you, my decision to walk away from a $100,000 a year job to become a fucking doomsday prophet has been financially suicidal for me. And there's plenty of uh, things I could be doing on YouTube to be making a hell of a whole lot more money than, than being a goddamn doomsday prophet talking, a, you know, talking about this subject. This is this decision to uh, do what I did with my life it has been absolutely sent me into financial ruin. And but it, it's it, it's it's as much as the money, guys. It's it's just it's just fucking demoralizing that uh, you know the harder and harder uh, that I work, the more and more effort uh, that that I put in. To, to this, the more of my time, energy that, that I pour into to, now to both of these channels, uh, the more subscribers, blah blah blah, and, and watching it, it, it's just it's just fucking demoralizing uh, that that these ingrates that 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 if 99% of the people uh, subscribing to my channel are are, are 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 so fucking ungrateful that that they will not show me the same fucking res just basic respect uh, you know that they show a, a, a cocktail waitress uh, setting a beer down in front of them they, they will give more money to to a you know someone setting a beer down in front of them uh, 
uh, every time they order a beer than they have ever sent to me or anybody else down here doing this in, in, in the Doomosphere. Uh, and, and it just gets fucking demoralizing. It's just like you want to say, fuck you. You know, and so I'd already made the decision that I'm going uh, to make Humpty Dumpty Tribe a paid channel that is going to cost one fucking dollar a month for Humpty Dumpty Tribe, but you got to have 10,000 subscribers, and I'm at right at 7,000. So, I mean, that's not even open. So, th there, there is a, a subtle difference between, uh, I, 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 you know, guys, uh, ten years of doing this, uh, I have made as much money as as I would make in in one month uh, going back into real estate. It's just it's just fucking demoralizing. Uh, you know, it really is. It's just fucking demoralizing. Uh, and, it, and it just makes me. It's depressing. It's demoralizing, and it's just like. Well, what the fuck? If, if, if nobody appreciates, and well, I won't say nobody, and once again, for any, for the few of you who have ever found it in your hearts and wallets to ever throw me a dollar bill for what I do, uh, I, I, I truly appreciate the, the financial and moral support. There's about <clears throat> five or six tribes members. Uh, I would say that my top six financial contributors have contributed, uh, I would say over 50%, probably 60 or 70% <clears throat> of the total amount of money I have ever received on YouTube come from five or six people. And my angels, I call them. You know who you are. <coughs> and I love you guys. And... The other 30 to 40 percent are uh, is everyone else who is founded in there, uh, but but it's really five or six people uh, who have you, you, you know who have uh, supported me, and and I absolutely love you guys. But it but it's the same people uh, every time, and, and as much as I appreciate that, it, you know. It's just demoralizing, uh, and, 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 I'm, and I'm getting fucking sick and tired of it, and, and just, just wondering, you know, on top of the financial stress, dealing with this truck, dealing with my health issues, you know, I've got to be getting to a, uh, to a couple of doctors for different parts of my body. Uh, from my brain to the uh, closer to the other end of the spectrum uh, well maybe it's the same spectrum uh, as, as my brain uh, and, and of course my rotten teeth uh, I, I can't be I, I, I can't keep keep on living like this you know I've, I've got to get back to the goddamn matrix and then this of course brings me into something's got to give here on YouTube and uh, and and now just what well, this weird thing <coughs> that has just suddenly flared up just suddenly flare I mean in, in the last week or two over there on collapse Chronicles which I'm really happy with the way that channel's been going so anyway for for those of you who do not understand it, there is, I have an angel over at Collapse Chronicles. He does. This is my buddy Jay down in Brazil. This is a two-man show. And, uh, and Jay, uh, with absolutely zero financial and or just any kind of reward, just, just because he is a great guy who wants to bring this information out, he is the, the, the one who does a lot of the work actually arranging all of these interviews. You, you, you know, contacting the people, keeping track of all of this, setting up interviews, helping me do all this. That's where the work is. Actually having the interview is, uh, is the easy part. So anyway, 
you know, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna be around with a good computer, good Skype thing. So I've got to front load a lot of interviews in the Collapse Chronicle pipelines because once I get back in my new gas sucking truck and head off to New York, I don't know what my internet connection situation. So the idea was while I was here this spring that we were gonna gonna get a lot of interviews pre-recorded. Are you following me? To get them in the pipeline. And so we really went on this big push uh, about, uh, you know, as soon as I got back, we really got, you know, got down to work. <clears throat> and Jay has a lot of shit going on. You, you, you think uh, I, I'm a, that, that I have some stuff to whine about? Jay has enough on his goddamn plate down there in Brazil with what's going on with him uh, that uh, I have no fucking idea why, how he finds the time to do this, or why he has other things to worry about uh, than, than Collapse Chronicles to help me out on Collapse Chronicles. And uh, I, I am completely, uh, so I am completely uh, dependent on the guy. So basically, if, if, uh, if, if Jay uh, walks out on uh, Collapse Chronicles, and I wouldn't blame him one bit. Uh, if you do, brother, at, at, at this point. So anyway, we do all of this work. So we line up like eight interviews. Like eight interviews. So, I, I mean, lined up where people, where, where people have, uh, you know, said, yes, I want to interview. But what's happened in, in just the past few days is like five of those eight people are have have just canceled the interview uh, and you know this happened last night two of them you know where I actually had the interview the day the time pinned down with them and then like last night this guy I was supposed to interview next week uh, I, I get this very bizarre email from him uh, basically what he's saying is well Sam, I, uh, you know, I've kind of looked at, at, at the people you've interviewed, and I don't have anything to add to what Paul Ehrlich and, you know, and all of these other guys. Uh, it's just like how many ways uh, can you say we're fucked? Uh, he goes, I'm just going to come on here and, and sound like everybody else about how fucked we are. So there's no sense in you talking to me. And uh, this other guy, this professor from down here in Rice University in Houston, uh, he had, we had lined up, and, and then I just get this email, sorry, Sam, I'm, I'm really swamped, can't talk to you, can't, can't find a fucking hour. I don't have any idea what that was about. Uh, of course, I'm a little bit suspicious that they found this Hambone Little Tail character. And now I'm supposed to be interviewing this guy on Sunday, who I've been who I've been working on for Jay and I for almost a year, to try to pin this guy down. So a, a week ago we agreed to uh, the interview on Sunday, but we haven't gotten the time. I have sent the man three three fucking emails now saying, brother. We need. I need to know the time of the interview. He has just completely ditched me. He, he's obviously just ghosting me. I have been ghosted, and uh, and and two or three other three other guys who have said uh, that yeah that uh, I'm, I'll be glad to sit down and talk, and and then so they've committed on one level, but then. They, you know, I'll get back to you, whatever, and, and, and then they just disappear. Uh, like, um, like you, you know, this whole term ghosting, which is, I never heard this until a few weeks ago. never heard this term ghosting, but I guess I'll wind up this whine here. So on top of all of this other shit going on in my life, my health, difficulties, my uh, financial difficulties, dealing with this goddamn gas-sucking truck, 
uh, not, not even talking about the collapse of a planet, I, I have pathetically, pathetically, inexcusably uh, gotten back into pile of fish dating service. Uh, and so uh, I have, uh, so I met this this chick now, probably not a doomer chick, but not a clueless moron either. Uh, you know, I'm going to be house sitting up uh, outside of Ithaca, New York, for three weeks uh, this summer, and I found this uh, chick. She describes herself as a yogi, a yogi farmer artist. 53 years old, cute, has a little organic farm in upstate New York, about a half hour outside of Ithaca, blah, 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 uh, you know, how she was going to be my tour guide and we were going to, you know, run around and stuff. Uh, and, and she makes it clear on her profile that she's looking for friends. She is not looking for a relation. She's just looking for trying to make some friends, uh, some like-minded friends uh, up there in upstate New York. That was her stated purpose for going on there. So anyway, of course, uh, I've completely fallen in love with her. And uh, so what do I, what do I get? Uh, a, th th this friend uh, that I was going to make in, up, in upstate New York uh, day before yesterday I, I go on pile of fish you know to, to continue our discussion at least at least she was kind enough not just to ghost me meaning just to disappear with no and I get this ham bone I have what, what was the quote I have found somebody else. I have found somebody else and I am going to give him a try. Good luck on your search. So now I'm fucking broken hearted. I'm broken hearted. My truck's falling apart. My body's falling apart. Uh, I, I'm, I'm flat broke. And, and right now, I don't even know if I'm going to get my goddamn gas-sucking truck to the mechanic uh, so he can tell me, Hambone, uh, leave your truck here for a week and come back and get it and, and spend another $500. And that is where I am. Uh, right now but I see the sun is coming out and probably just a shadow and it is a gorgeous day in the end times so I'm gonna wrap up my depressed collapsitarian wine get in my gas sucking truck and head to Austin Texas cuz I am so fucked Bye, guys.